and welcome to my video on hemiacetals and acetals for introductory organic chemistry. Uh, so hemiacetals occur when an alcohol adds to a carbonyl group, and this can be one of the trickiest reactions that allied health students come across in their introductory organic chemistry classes. So I'm going to try my best to try to break it down for you in a very simple manner of really what is occurring in the reaction. So it all starts from just a simple carbonyl. So a carbonyl is any time you have a C double bonded to an oxygen, and this can come in the many different forms. The Specifically in this reaction is whenever you have an aldehyde and a ketone. So whenever we have this carbonyl, it's going to be reacting with an alcohol. So if you remember from class, that is an OH group that's attached to some sort of R group, which is an alkyl group or alkyl chain. So when these two things meet, what is really going to happen? So let's try to dive into it and go from step by step. So if it all goes, let's start with just an aldehyde reacting with an alcohol. And what this is going to make is a hemiacetal. So if I take a aldehyde and an alcohol, let's draw those out. So if I take the C double bond O, so we have our carbonyl. Now what makes an aldehyde is that it has a little hydrogen on it. And then that's going to be attached to an R group. And this is going to be coming into contact with an alcohol. So in order to show what exactly is happening in this reaction, well, we have to try to remember electronegativity, which comes from introductory chemistry and really how all these different atoms can have these little partial negative, partial positive charges on them. So if you remember elements like oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, these are always considered to be slightly electronegative. So they're always slightly negative. So why don't we put that little delta negative on there? And then if you kind of remember anything, anytime you have something that's a little electronegative next to something not so negative, well, they're always going to be positive. So things like hydrogen and carbon in this case will be a little positive. So if you remember from intermolecular forces, well, if I ever had a hydrogen next to an oxygen, well, they're going to be making a connection or an intermolecular force. Same thing with this other oxygen and carbon down here, right? They're going to be attracted to one another. So when you have multiple attractions, there's always a possibility for bonds to create, especially when it's favorable for the structure. So this is how a hemiacetal starts to form, okay? So this is where the hemiacetal is going to come into play. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking two bonds, and we're going to be forming two bonds. So how let's show that. So for breaking, what we're going to do is we're going to show that with little red X's. And then for forming, we're going to be showing that with little purple arrows. So the red X, what we'll see is we're going to be breaking one of the carbon oxygen bonds. Notice how there's two from the double bond. And then we're also going to be breaking the OH bond that is here. So both those are going to break, and what they're going to do, it's going to essentially, it's going to be rotating around the molecule. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to show where these new bonds are going to form. So the arrows are showing where that's going to be rotating around the molecule. So when that happens, we're going to take this intermediate structure that we have here. I'm going to copy and paste it down here and show how everything's going to be broken. So if everything with the red X's is going to break, oops, we're going to show that going away. The little blue dots are going to go away in the process, and they're going to be now be replaced with little purple lines from before. Okay, so that shows that, all right, those little purple arrows, they moved and they rotated. So this is what we refer to as our hemiacetal. So we have our hemiacetal structure that is here. We can get rid of these little delta pluses and minuses that we have here, and we can show our intermediate structure. Now, it looks a little funny, but that's going to be the same thing as if I, like, let's just redraw it for ourselves. So if we have a carbon with our OH on one side, and notice how we have two oxygens connected to the same carbon with a little hydrogen and then an R group, okay? So we have the little alkyl groups that are attached here, and it has that signature like little googly eyes look to it in its structure. So this, though, is not the final step. Hemiacetals are very unstable. 
they tend to not want to be in the structure all the time. And the reason behind that has to do with this little alcohol here. It's something, as you kind of noticed in the last step, caused the whole reaction in the first place. Well, the reaction is going to continue because it wants to keep going. So how do we get to the final step? Well, it has to go from a hemiacetal to an acetal. So if this was, if we had step one, we have our acetal here. Now for step two, what we're going to be showing is a condensation reaction. So in condensation, the whole idea is that we're going to be removing water. So how do we remove water? Well, whenever that is removed, that's something that's going to show that a bond is going to be created. So let's take our hemiacetal from before. And what we're now going to do is we're going to copy and paste it down here. And being that this is in a solution of alcohol, being an alcohol reacted with this earlier, we're going to now show how we're going to be removing water. So if I draw an alcohol, so I have my OH attached to an R group, and I'm going to color in my H from my other structure. Maybe you might see like, all right, well, how is H2O removed? Well, we have H2O that is right here. And we can see that that's going to be removed in the process. So when that happens, it's almost like taking a straw to a liquid and sucking the liquid out of it. And as a result, it's going to vacuum and close it all together and push it all closer together. So when we have that, we're going to redraw our structure just like so. And what we can now see is that instead, that purple line is now going to be connected to the R group, which was by that water earlier. And the other part of the structure is going to stay the same. So now we have our signature look here of two oxygens so with its little googly eyes, both connected to the same carbon. So we have, so if we want to redraw that for ourselves, we can. So we have our carbon with an oxygen, two of them both pointing in different directions with an with different R groups potentially on each side. Okay. So we have that look to it, and this is what we refer to as an acetal, all right? So acetal is when it originates from an aldehyde versus a ketal is when it is from an aldehyde, okay? So let's sum all that up so that way we have it in one location. What exactly is changing at each of these different parts? Well, let's go through it and try to see. So just in summary, what functional groups are changing? Because this is one of those different mechanisms you can try to memorize for yourself. So that way when you get to biochemistry and you're trying to understand how carbohydrates form with each other, we can try to remember the different groups we have. So if you remember in the beginning, we started with a carbonyl. That carbonyl, what exactly did it turn into? Well, if we go back up, we can see that, okay, well, we had our carbonyl here that I'm highlighting in blue. And we can see that it turned into an alcohol. So that was step one. The alcohol, the carbonyl turned into an alcohol. So why don't we draw that for ourselves, that that step happened. Then what happened to the alcohol in the next step? Well, let's try to follow it. So if you remember from up here, right, if this part was the part in blue, as we can see from above, well, that's when it turned into an ether. So that entire step went from, so in blue, went from carbonyl to an alcohol to an ether. All right, what about the other functional group? What does happen with the alcohol? Why don't we show that one in a different color? Why don't we pick, um, why don't we do pink for that one? So the alcohol, let's write that down for ourselves so we can make notes for ourselves. The alcohol went from what to what? So if I go back to my original structure, so let's follow the alcohol. So we see we have the OH here. Now in the new structure, we see that it changed to this ether here. So it went from an alcohol to an ether. Now let's see, did it do anything in the, in the next step? Well, in the second step, well, let's see, we still have an ether and it remains the same. So it doesn't change. So there's no, it only has to change once. So that first step of the reaction is really the hardest part. So, but however, we can break it down for ourselves as seeing that, all right, well, this went from an ether or alcohol to an ether. 
And then in step two, there was no change. So why don't we label that as ones and twos for ourselves so we can really see, and then we can write no change. All right, so in summary, this alcohol was added to this carbonyl, and eventually we made a hemiacetal. We'll say hemis, because that's our halfway point. So our acetal, and then it went to a full-blown acetal in the end. Now, just as a reminder, even though I did not show it, a ketone can also go through this reaction as well. And in that case, that would go from, so if before it was an aldehyde. So if we have a ketone, it'll turn into a hemiketal, so K-E-T-A-L, and eventually it'll go through a seam to its final step. Now, how can you tell the difference between the two? Well, it's actually really quite easy to do, is if you look at your final structure. Notice how if we look at the carbon where both the little oxygens are connected to, we see that there's a hydrogen here. What is something that's on the aldehyde structure in the very beginning? Well, go back. If you look at an aldehyde, notice how it had its hydrogen here. So if you see a hydrogen at the very end, that's how you can tell it's an acetal versus if it's a ketone, there will not be a hydrogen. So there's a lot of little things to take here. Feel free to watch this video as many times as you want. Hopefully it helps. And if you liked what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing and commenting for future videos. Thank you. And I hope this helped a little bit. All right, I'll see you all later. This is Dr. Dan, and please come by for future videos.